Time is now 10 to 7, and there's a big row going on in scientific circles about our brains. A very ambitious project has been in the planning for quite a long time now, to map the entire brain in computer models so we'll know how it works. We might even possibly be able to make one, theoretically. But it is very expensive, and uh, many uh, neuroscientists say it won't work, and indeed it should be scrapped. Well, now the journal Nature has published an editorial saying the project must sail on. There's too much at stake for it to face an unnecessary headwind. So let's hear from both sides. I'm joined by Peter Latham, who's Professor of Theoretical Neuroscience at University College London, and by Professor Richard uh, Frack. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Professor. Uh, Frackoviak, will that do? That'll do. Right, good. <laughs> Co-director of the Human Brain Project. So you're a, an enthusiast, obviously, for it. Um, try and tell us in, lay, in layman's terms what you want to do. Um, you know, one of the big problems we face in society is um, diseases of the brain, particularly in ageing, but also in, in kids with psychiatric disease. W- one of the problems we have in neuroscience is that though we understand genes and and the proteins they make, and a little bit about how they form neurons, we know nothing until our psychologists start uh, providing ideas about how we speak and think and feel and so on. We don't have any notion of how the brain is constructed, either in terms of its function or anything else. So that's what we need in order to be able to really advance with our medicines, we need to be able to advance with how we construct computers that are based on brain. Right. And right. we above all need to know what this thing is that sits in our heads. Okay, so so is it too fanciful to say uh, you're trying to make a brain? I mean, is that very silly? John, that's very silly. <laughs> okay, so what is, what's the next step down from it then? Well, it's a blueprint, really. Okay. I mean, if, if you've got a, a black box, we've got 40 years worth of information in there. 40 years worth of theories and concepts and so on. And there's been some fantastic advances. Right. But But you need to have this big one. I take your point. Let let me put that to uh, Peter Latham. Um, It sounds terribly sensible. Why are you opposed to it? So we're not exactly opposed to it. That's a little bit strong. Um, Solving the brain is is one of... I thought you said it was a colossal waste of money. Some, actually, some people may have said that. So it was an open letter. Okay. Um, And none of... And it didn't say it was a colossal waste of money. What it did say is that we as a community think the focus has become a little bit narrow and we'd like a fair and open view. So we don't actually want to scrap it. Right. That's, that's so, not correct. Okay, I mean, you, don't want to, you don't want to scrap it. Right? So, yeah. so the reports that, that have been appearing recently are, are, are a bit inaccurate, aren't they? Right. You, you don't want to scrap it. What do you want to do then? How, what do you want to do to, I don't know, slow it down, narrow its um, remit so, or what? So you actually want to widen its remit. Oh. So right now it's very focused. It's, it's basically, there, there are many parts to it. So it's, say, you know, it's one thing. But one of the big key parts of it is to, in some sense, simulate a brain. So make a computer that is, is essentially a brain. And, and it's a very much bottom-up approach. I thought that was very silly that when I suggested that to your colleague. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's really, in some sense, what they want to do, right. ultimately. And so a big part of it is, is very, very large computer simulations. So in a nutshell, the plan is to collect a bunch of facts, put them into a computer program run it, and hope it tells you something about how the brain works. And you're sceptical of that? Very sceptical. Yeah, it hasn't worked that well in the past. Um, it's science, so one I know one is supposed to not, not supposed to say nuanced things, but it might work. The chances are, you know, one in a thousand, one in a oh, million. Oh, right. Well, no, those aren't very good odds, Professor Frakowiak. No, you're, you're quite right, John, but, you know... Um, Peter's, Peter's speculating. Uh, if, if you go on the web and you look at what people said before the Human Genome Project or before the, um, the CERN uh, Antiproton uh, Project or before the Hubble Telescope went up, they, they were sceptical. And scepticism is part of science, and we welcome it and embrace it. However, we've got sufficient proof of principal uh, information, and it's submitted to journals, and it's being shown around at all the major congresses in neurology, psychiatry, neuroscience, 
to have convinced a panel of 25 very eminent and independent reviewers, some of whom are Nobel Prize winners, that this is a risk worth taking because uh, essentially it's highly innovative. It's applying big data, massive computing to something which has never used that sort of methodology before. And, uh, and, and uh, we've got the money from people who are in informatics. Right. We convince them to apply it to the brain. We think we're onto something fantastic. You just need to sit with some young scientists together, see how they're bouncing off the medics who are there and bouncing off right. the people. It is just amazing. So, in other words, oldies like you uh, are not sufficiently adventurous, Professor Latham. That's it, maybe. Too, a bit too sceptical. Well, I'm older than him. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so we are sceptical. So the human genome is an interesting example. There was a big, there was a lot of criticism and what they did is actually there were two panels, one scientific and one about public policy. Um, they released a, a report and they decided to go ahead with it. And we're actually, that's really all we're asking. We're asking, I mean, the, it's up for review anyway. What we really want is an open review um, with scientists who, and experts um, in bioinformatics who are not um, aligned with the project at all. It's really all we're asking. All right, I'll tell you what, ju just in a sentence, if you could, we're nearly out of time. It's going to cost quite a lot of money. What would you spend the money on instead? I would spend it on creative research, smaller grants. Neuroscience is really looking for creativity, not large simulations. All right, so spread it, spread it thinly. A sentence on that, Professor Brokovia. Well, you've said it yourself, John. Spread it thinly or go for the big time. I think the Americans over the last decades have shown us that you need a mixed portfolio. And uh, this, is, this is only 50 million in a year in relation to a billion per year that Europe spends on neuroscience. All right. So, you know, I think uh, I think people can make their own minds up, don't you? <laughs> They'll be better informed now at any rate. Thank you both very much indeed. Professor Brekovia, Professor Latham, thanks both. Thank you. Thank you.